But Marshall, surely you got the numbering all mixed up in the days. Yes? Correct. You see, from a Jewish point of view, the day starts in the evening, and the following daylight is the same day. So, if in the story they have to take his body down on the sixth day, they've got to have the body taken down before evening, because that's the seventh day starting. The confusion with the story is we don't recognize that that is not a Sabbath as in the sense of the day at the end of the week for the Jew. It's a special Sabbath. It's Passover. The story actually has him rising on the first day of the week, the next week, which is the eighth day of the last week. And by <laughs> synod decree of Constantine, basically, not the synod at all, that's declared to be the holy day for the Christian, Sunday. The eighth day, first day of the week, next one. Not surprising since he was a sun worshipper and probably most of his newly converted um, clergy as well. I mean by that, officially converted to Christianity. And of course, the day that you take communion is the eighth day, the first day of the week, the new week. In heaven, of course, you've ascended. He's ascended to heaven. It's the great fellowship day, Sunday. We go to church. <laughs> and of course, the Christian's forgotten really about whether you work or not on the Sunday. I mean, goodness. It was considered heresy to go to the cinema on a Sunday at one point, and the shops were all shut. Now the Christian slips into the supermarket after he's been to church and probably goes out to lunch in a restaurant where they're going to serve him, working. <laughs> Look, none of it makes sense. It becomes Monty Python very quickly. But you see the symbology of it all, don't you? They have to take him down, according to the story, because it's a holy day tomorrow, which means this evening from a Jewish point of view, starts this evening, tomorrow starts tonight. He's going to be in the tomb three days. That's tricky if he's going to rise Sunday morning. <laughs> from a Christian point of view. I mean, categorically, we need three days and three nights, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, according to the Jesus story. So the Sabbath that the Jews are worried about to get him off the cross must be a special Sabbath, and of course it is. I mean, according to one of the Gospels, the other, the Synoptic Gospels, he's keeping a Passover meal the night before he was betrayed. And of course, some of the uh, critics say there's an awful lot goes on in one night. <laughs> and I mean, who ever heard of a crucifixion where you're um, crucified at nine o'clock in the morning and taken off the cross at three in the afternoon because you're dead. I mean, the whole point of crucifixion is it goes on for days and the population get the message that you hear that chap moaning and crying on the cross, it's, uh, it's to tell you um, you don't disobey Caesar. Got it? Look, it's a story. Get it into your head. It's a story. If you don't understand it as a story, you will never understand it. You will be permanently at sea and confused and you end up with a Monty Python situation. A mockery of religion. Religion is not history. Religion is some attempt at 
theologically grappling with what we don't understand because we're children. Are you claiming then to understand it, Marshall? No, I'm not. I'm claiming that I know what I value and I can't love and be devoted to anything else. And it's through being devoted to what you truly value. You will come in integrity to heaven. Because of your devotion to God. Yes, in the form of what you value. But be true to that. And you'll trust God to reveal what you should really be true to. That's why you're here. In this world, in this universe, in this dimension of good and evil, that you might see the good and the evil and come to understand truly in your heart and being what you truly value. And that will be our Heavenly Dad. Something wonderful. And I might point out if not, what have you lost? For without such a God, everything else becomes meaningless and confusion. Taste and see. You'll know the way to go. Bless you. Quite simply, you see, it's not a question of intellect. It's not a question of philosophy or theology, theorizing or mastering some understanding. It's a question of what you at heart come to value. And that you will accept no other. You can only accept what you truly value. And there are these miraculous conversions, if you like, epiphanies, breakthroughs, realizations, flashes of enlightenment. When you suddenly realize, I don't care what is or what seems to be. I know what I value. Get out of my way. That's what I must do. You find you're devoted to God. It's not that you strive and eventually achieve it. It comes like the rain. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> you were preoccupied with goodness knows what. That, that's how miracles come. What Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle refers to as synchronicities, astonishing synchronicities crop up in your life. I mean, it can be that way. I mean, people do come through the miraculous experience. Others come through something that's far more subtle. They just suddenly realize in their heart they want to love God. So they do. <laughs> I don't care if it's reasonable or not. Do you see what I mean? I just want to do it. Hmm. Thank you, Dad.